So here we have an example where we are going to be distributing a fraction that is coupled with a variable over what's inside the parentheses. So the very first thing that we do before we even start thinking about what to do in the problem is if you see subtraction signs, turn them into plus negatives, okay? So here we have a subtraction sign. We're going to turn this into a plus negative. Here we have a subtraction sign. We're going to turn into a plus negative. That really helps us visualize that this is a negative term and when we're going to be distributing this over everything else, this is a negative term times this. This is a negative term times that. And this actually itself is a negative term because it was subtracting 10, which is the same thing as adding a negative 10. So we are going to be multiplying a negative times a negative here. So it does so much uh, good for us to be able to compartmentalize this as its own term, including that negative, when we do that plus negative. Okay. The other thing that we do, it's kind of like a checklist before you start any of these problems. The checklist includes making all the subtractions into plus negatives, as well as if you don't see anything between this term and the parentheses, there's nothing here. So what is assumed always, it's always assumed, is that it's a multiplication. So I highly recommend that the second thing that you're going to do on your checklist is to put a little multiplication dot in there just so it visualizes the importance of being able to multiply this times everything inside. It also visual, it's also a visual to tell you that this needs to be multiplied against the parentheses and not trying to be added to anything that's over here. We read from left to right, but that doesn't mean that we do math from left to right. Uh, necessarily, okay? In math, we follow PEMDAS, and PEMDAS is doing multiplication before any addition. So even if this was uh, like five right here, instead of all this, it was just five, it would be very tempting to add four plus five and then take that, nine, and multiply it times all this. That is not what you do. You have to multiply these first, and then whatever you get that's left over, then you can add it to the four but not the other way around. So those are the two very important things that I would very much insist on you doing. Okay, so now we bring down the four because we can't do anything with four quite yet. And we're gonna add, and we're gonna take this term, negative three-fifths r, we're gonna multiply it times this term, then we're gonna add it to the product with that term. Okay, so negative three-fifths r times two-thirds r. Okay, so we just multiply those two. We're not done yet, but that's a good start. Plus, we have to honor this addition sign, plus negative three-fifths r times negative 10. Okay, so this is an intermediary step that is not totally necessary, but I think it's very important when we're learning how to do this to really be very explicit line by line. And so I wanna show you exactly what's going on, okay? If you, in the future, get really good at this and you wanna skip this step and just go to the next step that we're gonna be doing, that's fine. But let's, Let's get used to it first. Okay, again, I can't do anything with this four right now, so I just keep it here, plus, all right. So this is, and if you want to um, put little multiplication dots in here, feel free to, that's fine. This is negative three times r, this is two times r. Two is the coefficient of the variable r. Negative three is the coefficient of the variable r. In fact, technically, this whole thing is the coefficient of r. 
So this is negative 3 fifths is the coefficient of r here, and here 2 thirds is the coefficient of r, okay? So, so if you want to put a multiplication sign there, go for it. You don't have to, but it, it just reminds you that everything here is stuck together with this multiplication glue. And multiplication glue is a lot stronger than addition, than getting stuck with addition. So that's why you need to do this multiplication first, all right? So um, we're just, it's just as we're multiplying fractions. If we were multiplying negative 3 fifths times 2 thirds, that would be you multiply across the top and across the numerator and across the denominator. So negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. 5 times 3 is 15. So that's negative 6 fifteenths. We'll get to the R in a second. Negative 6 fifteenths can be reduced. 3 goes into 6 and 15. So 3 goes into 6 twice. 3 goes into 15 five times. So that would be uh, negative 2 thirds. No. That does not make sense. Uh, 6 fifteenths, um, 2 fifths, I'm sorry. Negative 2 fifths. And then now we take care of the r's. So we multiply the two fractions together, and we boiled it down to negative 2 fifths. Now r times r, OK? r times r is r squared. Right? So that's really important to see. So when you can multiply those terms together. And then over here, we have negative 3 fifths times r, if you want to put the little dot in there, fine, times negative 10. So negative 3 times negative 10 is negative 30. I, I'm sorry, positive 30, because we have a negative times a negative. So that's a product of positive 30. And 30 divided by 5 is 6. So we have 6r over here. Okay, so this is our answer. We can't go any further than this because to combine these you need to have like terms. r is a different term than r squared and both of these are different than the constant 4. When we talk about numbers that are not being multiplied against any other variables or anything else we just call them constants. So this is as far as we can go. We can rearrange this if you want. Um, Remember, this negative needs to go wherever this term goes. So if we write negative 2 fifths r squared out front, that negative needs to go with it. Um, and then you could do 6r if you want. And then you could do 4. I mean, this is just another way that you could rearrange it. But they both mean the same thing. Both are completely correct. So I'll give you a chance to work with not only distributing with fractions, but also these. Um, variables as well, all right? Now, the last thing I want to say is, wait a second. You might think to yourself, I can't combine unlike terms. If two terms are not similar, like if one has an R and one doesn't have an R, I shouldn't be able to combine them. You can't combine them by adding and subtracting. You can't combine them that way. You can only combine like terms through addition and subtraction. But it's fine if there are unlike terms when you're multiplying or dividing. You can multiply and divide unlike terms all day long. That's totally fine, okay? So I want you to, want you to know that it's totally fine to multiply these even though they're unlike terms, okay? Um, X and Y are unlike terms, but you can still multiply them and it turns into an XY. Again, there's no multiplication sign here, but I want you to know that you could put it there if you wanted to, okay? Just like 4x, there's no multiplication sign between 4 and x, but I want you to know that if you want to, you could put a multiplication dot there if that, if that visualizes things better for you. Okay, so I'll let you get it. Go at it.